Okay. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, welcome. Um, thank you for spending your uh, lovely Friday afternoon, four o'clock with us. We really appreciate it. Um, so I am Cindy San Lucao. I'm an assistant professor um, at Cornell University where I direct the hybrid body lab. Um, and uh, I'm very excited today to um, have this Q&A session to answer any questions um, you all may have about our artist residency. Um, and so this was a residency um, that I created, um, I would say around, uh, around almost five years ago um, with the inception and writing uh, the early funding, um, grant writing to fund this residency. Um, and I think the goal is really to invite um, experts in on-body art and design, such as yourselves, um, to come into our research laboratory and to really use the newest types of um, emerging conformable forms of technology uh, and to explore how you may integrate that into your practice and also to provide us feedback um, as to maybe what we're doing right versus what we're doing wrong. Um, so we're very, very, very excited um, about this opportunity. Um, and um, Jingwen, um, I'll let her uh, do her own introduction. Um, she is a PhD student in the Hybrid Body Lab and she has been um, the main student lead um, running this uh, this residency. Jun, do you wanna do a quick intro? Um, yeah, uh, hi, I'm Jingwen. I'm currently a third year PhD student in human centered design. And uh, my research is mostly around um, um, e-textiles and especially using like bio-integrated design. And uh, for the artist residency, um, I am really honored to be able to participate as an organizer and um, and have the opportunity to collaborate with the previous like two artists in residence and really looking forward to meet you all and um, and see what we, uh, what amazing work we will create, like collaboratively uh, create together this year. Um, and awesome. could jump to the next slide. Right, and then, um, so we have organized a board of uh, committee members um, to assist us. Um, um, so this the selection committee includes my, myself and Jing, and also all of the PhD and postdoctoral researchers in my lab. Um, and uh, we have also assembled uh, the board of committee members. So, um, and you can see, um, that they come from both academia and industry um, and are also practicing artists. And they really offer us, I think, um, very important feedback in reviewing all these applications. And so our committee members, uh, first of all, is Dr. Jaleesa Reed. Um, she, so she is a professor um, at Cornell focusing on uh, uh, Black beauty, um, researching um, the social and cultural aspects of Black beauty practices in the U.S., um, Sarah Gotoa, she is a uh, fiber artist. Um, she is also the owner and director of Luna Fiber Studio. So she focuses on woven based textile art. Um, finally is um, Oksana Annie. Um, so she is a senior designer um, at Nike in Portland. Um, and so she, with a, she was trained at the Royal College of Art. So she really comes from a fashion uh, design background. Awesome, so can skip to the next slide. And as a, uh, I think just a very, very brief intro. Um, so I think for our lab's work, um, pictures speak a thousand words. <laughs> I'm, I'm quoting that right. But I highly recommend you um, to just check out our lab's website. Um, here I have a screenshot of it um, on the left of some of our most recent projects. Um, we focus on the uh, design creation also research um, of technology that can be crafted directly on the body surface or even into the body surface. Um, and we like to take a very, um, I would say a culturally sensitive and socially informed approach um, and how we are designing um, these technologies. And this is why this artist residency um, is also so important um, for us um, in understanding um, uh, the cultural and social aspects towards on-body design. 
Um, on the right, um, so I think the most important thing about a research app are really its people. Um, so you can see these are all of the exciting people um, that you can work with um, um, as the artists in residence. And uh, I also encourage you to check out each of these folks' profiles on our lab website. They really come from all different disciplines. Um, so for example, Jiwen, she has a background in uh, interaction design and, uh, and uh, media arts. Um, we also have some folks with backgrounds in physics and computer science um, and fiber science, material science, um, the list goes on. And so it is really a very transdisciplinary environment. Um, and uh, so we are also um, looking, I think, for, for folks who are open um, to learning um, and um, often being forced to sort of jump outside your comfort zone. Um, so the way that you're maybe used to working in your existing field and to, you know, just be inspired. Um, by different people who are, uh, who might have a distinct viewpoint from you. Fantastic. And about our residency. So, um, so this residency, uh, we have to, we're very, very grateful for funding through the National Science Foundation um, through a career award. Um, and so people are often surprised um, that the main source of funding is actually from the National Science Foundation. But I think they are very, very, interested in also understanding the impact of um, technology um, on different disciplines. And um, so we're, we're very, uh, again, grateful um, for this funding and also because uh, of that it is funded through the NSF. So for us, um, it is important for us as researchers um, to also um, distill insight through this process. And this is why throughout the artist residency process, which Jima will introduce uh, a little bit later, um, we will often maybe um, interview you, um, ask you about what you think, um, This because this is very, very important for us to um, be able to um, share our insights back um, with the NSF. And so in this residency, um, we mainly designed it to enable artists and we're open to artists that work on the body, as a scale, the scale of the body broadly defined, um, and really to collaborate with us. So even though we come from a lot of different disciplines, we are um, the, the main um, holistic academic area that we work in is called human computer interactions, um, and we are researchers. And so this is the two groups, I would say, of people that we're really trying to bring together and really to enable an opportunity to combine on-body design with the emerging miniaturized technology. And we really invite artists um, using um, the body surface, skin, and its appendages. So this includes hair, fingernails, toenails, um, eyelashes, um, teeth. Um, what am I missing? Um, eyeballs, I don't know, anything. So skin and its appendages, Azure, medium or surface for art and design to apply. Um, we're very, very open um, to um, artistic on-body disciplines that are kind of emerging um, or even between um, disciplines. So like maybe it's kind of between jewelry and a tattoo. We love that. So um, if you feel you can't be defined, the more reason to apply, okay? Um, yeah, and so I think with that, I'll hand it over to Jing Wen, and she's going to go over some of the um, details um, about our residency. So, Joanne, I'll hand over the mic to you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, uh, I will quickly go through the details, and you can also find these information on our website. So, the timeline is that the application is due April 5th. And uh, you will be notified uh, by May 10th about the final decision and uh, uh, whether you got in or uh, we are also open to other form of collaboration. So we will definitely reach out um, if we think you are a potential fit for the artist residency or other type of collaboration. And the eight weeks of residency will be between September 23rd and November 22nd. So it's like roughly um, uh, two months, but we are, we could like work with you to figure out the exact starting and ending time. Um, 
and then the exact date would be eight weeks. Um, and then we, we have a weekly structure and we have been um, kind of like following the structure, but the, like based on the logistics, things might be shifted a little bit. So basically the first week is for you to um, learn the skills and also share your skills. So we have five labs prepared for you to quickly learn about the techniques we've developed throughout uh, our previous research. And um, the um, at the same time, you will host a Skillshare, uh, skill sharing workshop uh, with our lab members to uh, for us to learn about your like a specific techniques or approach uh, for your art creation. And the second week would be the brainstorming session that we will have uh, several meetings and brainstorming sessions to work together uh, to discuss uh, and choose a primary uh, topic and the primary project collaborator. So for a lot of cases, I would be the main collaborator, but depends on the project type or the idea, we might have other lab members who are have more like relevant research in the certain um, direction, and they will collaborate with you as well. Um, and one of the example is uh, like last year, uh, we had uh, um, Joe George collaborating with a PhD student in our lab, uh, Pinson, using one of the kits he developed in his previous research. And the third to seven week will be project code development and sample creation. So we accept, expect the artists to uh, do several rounds of sample creation or like explore different aspects of the project throughout these um, four weeks. And then uh, the last week would be um, to wrap up the project and prepare the public presentation of, of the work. And previously has been the uh, artist talk uh, at the end of the, uh, like at the end of this week to have an art, artist talk introduce your project. Um, but at the same time, you will also prepare other like public facing material, for example, open source the tutorial uh, so that other people can learn from your process. Um, so our expectation for the artists um, are, um, it's mostly just to, um, to make it clear what are the deliverables in this page. And we don't have a, like a specific requirement or anything, but it's more like what uh, we are thinking that this collaboration will be like. So first is like collaborate with the researchers and participate in the, all the skill sharing workshops and then stay in Ithaca to work in the lab uh, for around uh, 30 hours per week and then deliver two talks. And one is about your own like art practice at the beginning of the uh, residency. And one is at the end that I just mentioned that you will just introduce your artist's residency experience and your project. Um, and then um, you will also participate in um, exhibition and interviews about the process. So interview would be mostly with me and I just Want to learn about your overall experience here, uh, what's your takeaway uh, from the collaboration, et cetera. And the exhibitions is mostly, um, we are planning this uh, exhibition to collaboratively, uh, collaboratively exhibit all the artist residency projects over the past two years and including this one, um, possibly in the spring next year. Um, in terms of funding, we have, uh, a stipend for the eight week of the duration. And we have a material budget that will be um, used for this project. And out, outside the material budget, we also have a lot of supplies and equipments we have in the lab, which we'll, I would talk about later. And we also have uh, uh, the reimbursement for the transportation, considering this year we are open to out of New York State artists. Um, so in terms of lab facilities, um, we have, um, so in terms of lab facilities, we have a uh, facility in the lab as well as like the resources we have from the university, uh, especially our department, uh, human-centered design. So um, we have the 
uh, Formlabs uh, 3D printer and automaker, uh, as well as we have like two uh, floor looms. We have sewing machine and also uh, the double bed knitting machine. Um, we also have a film hood for all the chemical experiments and also an electrical engineering workbench for like soldering and other circuit assembly work. And beyond that, uh, in our, the same building of our lab, we have the digital design fabrication studio where they have a more uh, fab digital fabrication supply, including um, laser cutting and larger scale 3D printing, etc. Uh, uh, we also have access to a TC2 digital Jacquard loom. So I will quickly go through some uh, photos of past residencies, and we will also have our uh, two artists resident, um, Joe and Morgan, uh, join us. Um, so these are the photos we took during our first skill sharing workshop uh, hosted by Morgan, and she shared with us uh, different um, like makeup art processes, as well as some certain techniques for the embodied color painting. And this uh, workshop is open to all of our lab members, including PhD researchers, and also for some undergraduate and uh, master's students. And these are photos from uh, our um, residency last year, where Joe showed us how to do uh, like, all the tools and techniques for tattoo and also um, certain techniques to turn the digital design into like an on-skin design. Uh, and also some fo photo of like he applying the final project for the photo shoots. In terms of the artist talk, so these two are the photo we captured during the artist talk. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, the previous two residencies were hosted in the summer. So we're open to students who are here around uh, in the summer, but this time we were hosting uh, it in fall. So expecting more students will participate in all the processes because more students are here during the semesters. Um, so in 2022, the artist in residence project, uh, it's called Social Prosthesis, uh, created by Morgan. Um, and uh, this work has also been exhibited in the Eastwick Design Exhibition last year. And the 2023 Artist Project uh, is a series of exploration of temporary tattoos. And on the uh, second picture on the left is the Skin Link Project um, that Joe collaborated with uh, Pinsone to use the skin link kit Pinsone developed for his previous research project and Joe used that to create an on-skin design. And here are some um, screenshots of the tutorials. So each resident created a tutorial to make the design more accessible to a wider audience. So uh, we will work with you together to turn your work into a tutorial, step-by-step -step tutorial that people can follow to create. And we will make the design files open source as well. Um, and here are some pictures about uh, the fall in Ithaca. It's very beautiful in the fall. Um, and then you can go to the hikes, uh, even like there are so many different uh, uh, hikes around the uh, university campus um, and then it's very easy to get around and even just do a hike on your way back home. Um, the There are also other different places you can go that's around if you drive and um, and during the fall there are also other school activities will be hosted on campus uh, and we um, Corona has a famous like a dairy bar that you could go and get ice cream after a day of work so I would say it's a like very nice um, season in the fall to come and visit Ithaca. In winter, maybe not, but in fall, it's really beautiful here. Um, so now I will, um, let me just quickly check if uh, we have the artists here and I will have them on the call. So I will, let me see if yes, I do see them. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I saw them. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so first, uh, let's welcome Morgan. Hi. Um, hi, I'm Morgan. Uh, I was the 2022 artist in residence. Um, I came into the program with a sort of background in makeup artistry. Um, I've done makeup artistry for a film and I've done a lot of body painting. Um, and something that I was like exploring at the time and sort of starting to get to learn was uh, 3D artistry, 3D printing. And um, I currently work as a 3D artist in the fashion industry. Um, my personal art practice like outside of my day job is materially based, body centric and focused on cultural and social political significance. Um, I'm interested in the body, not only as like ornamentation, but sort of the, um, the greater significance of it and um, the sort of value that some bodies have over others. And um, I've worked with biomaterials, physical computing, filmic storytelling, among other things. And something I'll say about the residency program is that it was a really great opportunity to experiment with the resources they have there to see the PhD research that, that is being done there um, and get like an understanding of what the work that the lab does. Um, and for me personally, it was like very invaluable to look at my body of work as a whole, um, which sort of gave me a better sense of my direction and artistic purpose. And of course, like practicing public speaking and being able to explain your work. So it's a great program. I think I might have lost audio. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. All right. Um, Go ahead. I'm, I'm Joe. Thanks. It's great to see everyone again. Um, made a lot of, I feel like, good connections and friends at the studio. So it's it's cool to see see people here. I'm, I, I studied painting in college and um, through some circumstances wound up uh, moving into tattooing and uh, on body art as well um and i was never really satisfied with like tattooing quite as a medium but i i really think that the the body itself is like a, a really somewhat of like a, a final frontier of like what can you know it, it it's might be the hardest surface you could possibly work on um and so the things that they're doing at Hybrid Body Lab are really, really um, exciting to me. And uh, I feel like I gained uh, insight that I will, I mean, I, I'm currently studying what I was learning there and I'll, I'll take that with me forever. Um, Ithaca is extraordinarily beautiful. The lab is so helpful. And um, yeah, I don't know. Thank you, Joe. And also, do you want to talk about the, the new work you worked on after the residency? Sure. I yeah. saw you put a picture here. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to just like include that. Um, I don't know. One of the things that I, I thought was definitely fun and, and interesting that uh, I was introduced to at Hybrid Body was uh, just touch capacitance in general, um, on body touch capacitance. I, I think um, Cindy had the, um, developed the, the foil that can it's like a temporary tattoo and that was originally what I saw online that was like I have to reach out to this person um and that's how I got involved with the residency um but yeah so this is a touch capacitance project that uh, it's just a simple midi controller but it's a 12 note keyboard so, so it's you can theoretically play a song with your thumb uh, on your hand and I don't know yeah, um, awesome. yeah exactly. I saw someone doing it. There's 12, yeah, we got 12 pads on our fingers. So it was 12 notes <laughs> an octave. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm working on, I, it basically inspired like 
the residency inspired like an entire new direction of work that I'm pursuing. So that's how profound it, it could be, I feel like. Thank you. Yeah, yeah so um, now we will get to our like the Q&A session. So I think we'll prioritize any questions if you want to ask uh, Morgan or Joe about their experience or any specific things uh, you want to ask them. Uh, you can like start asking the questions. Um, and I will just stop sharing the screen so I can see everyone. Um, and then if you have any question, uh, just feel free to unmute and then ask. Hello, everyone. My name is Olivia. Hi, Jingwen. Hi, Emily. Olivia. Nice to see you again. Yeah. You. Sorry, I'm. I am not getting off the camera right now, but um, I just wanted to ask um for the previous artists and residents, how much did your application like? How much did you know going into it what you wanted to focus on, and how much was that able to change or shift um with what you kind of learned during those first like labs? Um, I, I had um, a, a really good idea that I, I wanted to make 3D printed temporary tattoos and I wanted those to like house whatever <laughs> electronics or sensors or whatever might be um, used at the lab. Um, so I had like a general um, general want to do that and I knew that they had a resin printer there. That resin printer is phenomenal. Um, it, I feel lucky to have gotten to use it. Um, and so when I, when I got to the lab, I just basically took a, a very, like a pretty thorough, like visual inventory of all the equipment and um, just kind of like let the, the work come from the equipment, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Uh, Morgan, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I, I think I also, um... I think the proposal was sort of the first step in the direction that I took. Um, and then like Joe, once I got there, I got to see sort of the work that um, Hybrid Body Lab has already done. We do tutorials um, showing like previous lab work, like uh, the temporary tattoo duo, duo skin. Um, so through that, I sort of like incorporated that into my original proposal um, that ultimately became the project. Um, but I think it's also okay uh, if you don't have a specific design direction. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to explore. Thank you. Thank you, uh, um, Morgan. Thank you, Olivia, for the question. Um, there's another question um, in the Q&A um, about where do residents live during the residency? So uh, we will share uh, a list of sublet options and we will also share this info in, uh, with our mail list of, uh, around campus to look for sublet options. Usually if, uh, when students are study away, then they will have their uh, like apartments or share apartments uh, sublet. So that's the housing situation. And there is another question from Anna Ting. Hi, Anna, thank you. Um, I I was wondering, when you're there at the residency, um, do you have a workspace or um, how does that work? Um, um, yes, uh, so we have a, a lab space. Actually, I'm in the lab. So we have a lab space that's like shared lab space um, among all the lab members, including all the PhD students and other researchers. So you will work in the space with us together. Uh, and we also have a studio space that's more like a desk. Uh, so you will have a dedicated desk to yourself that you could use uh, to set up your uh, computer monitor, anything there. Uh, that's like the, uh, the other floor of the same building. So that would be the workspace, um, the two main workspace. And we also have the commons and other like uh, space you can like hang out or like and have lunch or like uh, a lot of other options on campus. But is there any limitations on like how um, 
if you have a project, then it's uh, maybe an installation or something that is also um, has to do with the body and the skin and, and uh, etc. Et is there any limitation on how like big a project can physically be? Yeah, I'm happy to answer that. Um, so we have um, a lot of space, different types of spaces. And so if it happens, so happens that you need a much larger space that's maybe on furniture scale, et cetera, um, we can identify space for you. And it would likely be in our machine shop. Yeah, so we have, a, we have the best machine shop across Cornell. And then right next to it is a assembly room. Right. And then um, you we would um, likely be able to reserve some of that space for you. However, because it this residency will take part will happen in the fall semester. So um, uh, there may be some courses there that you might have to share the space with. Um, however, if uh, your project um, is on a desktop table scale, um, what we've typically done um, for our prior to uh, our projects is that um, basically each of our artists had sort of a, a, a desk of their own. Yeah, that you could sort of just set it up. And I believe maybe Morgan and Joe can also speak more to this. Um, yeah. And yeah, so so I think um, I think the takeaway is that um, don't be limited by your scale. We'll we'll figure something out. OK, thank you. Um, I just also wanted to add and thank that there's 24 hour access in the lab and that was really wonderful and uh, it just really feels like you have like your own station like it feels like you're temporarily very much like part of like the lab um, like physically yeah. Yeah, any other questions? Yeah, or um, I think while people are maybe thinking of questions, I'm kind of like, I'm wondering if like um, Joe and Morgan, um, do you have any recommendations um, for uh, the artists who are considering applying and maybe, um, yeah, just what advice you might have for them? Um, I think that could also be really helpful. And I'm also live streaming this through our Facebook account. This is why I have my phone. I'm not playing my phone. <laughs> Just FYI. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, Jim, if you have anything you'd like to share um, to to these artists, thank you. Yeah, I I can't imagine how like beautiful Ithaca would be in the fall because it was like sublime in the summer, and my apartment was that my sublet was actually at the bottom of like this hiking trail and I had to hike seven waterfalls to get to Cornell every day. <laughs> um, and that was uh, pretty uh, grueling after a while, but it was also extremely beautiful. Um, oh, I forgot the question. Um, yeah, yeah. I think just um, anything, um, any advice um, you would, you might have uh, to uh, folks who are considering applying, like what maybe um, for their application, but also like maybe what you might suggest them to um, to um, take advantage of, I would say, um, through this residency. Yeah, I, I really think that the residency for me, um, it was kind of like the gift of time and space. Um, I live in New York City. I'm in Canada right now, but I live in New York um, and you don't get um, time like that in New York to, or in New York City, to really, really just kind of think in a concentrated way, um, especially because, like, my social circle went from, you know, however many people to, like, a handful, like, overnight, um, it really, like, left me to uh, have extremely, like, focused time, um, so I would say bring have have with you uh you know all your ideas like anything that you you you've envisioned like have those and 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 you have time to really process those on a deep level um especially with the facilities provided and come with a plan is what i'm saying and then be ready to change that plan
I'll speak to sort of the application and um, in at least my personal opinion, how to like sort of make your application stand out. Um, I think that having a strong portfolio, of course, is a must. Um, showing sort of a body of work that, um, you know, maybe not just if you have a strong project, that's great, but um, showing that you've like had consistent projects um, is probably helpful. Um, another thing I would say is if you don't have like a specific project plan, I think there's like a proposal component to the application if I'm not mistaken. But um, so when you're writing your plan, even if it's not fully, like if you don't fully know what, like showing that you have some sort of direction or some sort of like research interest, um, I, or like showing even like mood board pictures, stuff like that can really be um, helpful in boosting sort of your application. Thank you, uh, Jen Morgan, uh, for sharing these. And also, there is a question. Uh, there are several questions in the Q and A. One is, um, uh, can residents use lab materials such as bio materials, or are you expected to purchase your own? So to answer that, we have done a variety of uh, projects, and also including bio material based projects. So we have a lot of like. Uh, extra material and supply from previous project and you are more than welcome to use them um, and on top of that if there are any particular materials you're interested in you would like to explore you could uh, order them through the budget of the $300 like projects uh, budget so uh, we will work with that um, as well and I think both Morgan and Joe have ordered uh, specific materials they are interested in and also use like a particular supply from previous projects. Yeah, I actually, I took um, a couple weeks to decide how I was gonna spend the money because I, I didn't want to waste it on something that I was not gonna use or not, not care about in a few weeks. Um, so by the end of those, I think three weeks, maybe, um, I decided that I wanted flexible resin, which the Form Labs SLA printer is capable of printing. So it was 3D printed resin that, that can flex an amazing material. Um, yeah. mm. Thank you, Joe. And uh, another question is how many residents will you accept into the program? So um, it has been one resident per year, but Cindy has some news to share. Yeah, so um, I would, I think the answer is at least one. <laughs> so depending on the applications we get. Yeah, so we really encourage people to apply. Um, yeah, and especially um, this will be our first time having the residency in fall. Um, and this is also the first time we're also opening up application to um, to outside of New York State. Uh, um, so yeah, we're, we're very, um, we're quite open. Yeah, but yeah, we definitely um, wanna get uh, someone uh, here um, and to learn from them and for them to also access all of these facilities this fall. And then the, there's another question about the artists on F1 visas. So this is uh, some uh, also new to us. So we need to refer to our admin to understand the hiring process for uh, international applicants who work on visas, but like we need to go through that process with admin to understand that before we get back to you. Yeah, so um yeah, so I we we have um we have uh amazing administrative support at Cornell. Um and so for international applicants, um uh should we uh make you an offer uh to be the artist in residence, we will work with you to resolve the visa uh situation. Um, I do have a question. So you had mentioned that there's like a machine shop. I'm wondering what other spaces um, or studios or shops are available on top of that. If there are others like workspaces or studios. 
Yeah, I'm um, happy to talk about that. And um, yeah, so she went, um, you're on your laptop, right? Um, yeah, I was thinking one of us could maybe go down and show you guys the the shop. But yeah, um, anyway, so the machine shop um, has a view to one of our waterfalls. So first of all, <laughs> so it has everything. It, 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 it's like a, it has like the largest CNC machine, laser cutter. Um, it has a very elaborate woodworking facility. Um, and of course, a lot of different types of 3D printers um, and a lot of other stuff that I probably have forgot, but you would definitely have access to that. Um, in addition to that, um, we have a new, um, mini uh, maker space. It's not very mini. It's actually really big. <laughs> and it's in this, like, I don't know how many foot like hall, but it's, it's also like a lounge space and people also work there and discuss it. So you would definitely have access to that. Um, and there are 3D printers and also smaller size laser cutters. Here. So it's, so it's more like a quick, um, rapid prototyping space also in our building. Um, both Joe and Morgan and Morgan, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they both use the body scanner. Um, we have a full body scanner in the building. We're happy to support the artists if they're interested in trying it out. Um, we have a lot of, we have wet lab facilities in our building, um, and also, you know, ability to do bio-based, um, like incubation in the building. Um, and we can also support that if it's relevant for the project. Um, we have a lot of advanced textile manufacturing equipment. We have, um, floor looms um, and we also have a tc2 jacquard loom um, that's for weaving for knitting um, we have a manual hand knitting machine and also shima seiki um, and again it, if relevant for the artist project um, we can support the artist in using the equipment um, so yeah so i would say yeah, you would have access to equipment spanning like digital fabrication, right? And then um, uh, bio-based design, um, textile manufacturing, and also one other part that I forgot is hardware. So we have a lot of um, hardware manufacturing equipment as well, because that's very relevant to our main research. Anything I'm forgetting, do you want? We also have a photography studio that has a... Yeah. a for backdrop and uh, the lighting for it's actually for fashion design students to do their the photo shoots. So I think both of the artists uh, have used that before. Um, and in terms of like bio based materials, and we have a lot of these uh, supplies. And we actually next to our lab is the fiber science lab that have access to a lot of equipment for like. Uh, all the processes, like even including like all the bacteria-based exploration, like incubator, autoclave. Um, and also we have access to CCMR where they have really advanced equipment. Um, some are uh, like digital or like material examining, but that's also like based on like project needs and we can figure that out. So basically you will have support, not just from our lab, but also we have resources from college and um university right and i'm wondering if like joe and morgan you guys uh could maybe just share more about maybe the type of equipment beyond the 3d printer that you might have accessed and uh yeah, yeah and what were the other equipment you wish you had access to? <laughs> yeah, totally um, i am you're literally surrounded by state-of-the-art equipment and it's pretty overwhelming at first and there's a lot of things that you might not you know how to even implement yet. Um, like since the lab, I've gotten into soldering on a regular basis. And that was something I didn't even know how to do when I was there. But there was a soldering station. And then right next to the soldering station is a Microsoft HoloLens, which is like a $4,000 AR piece of equipment. So it's like, if you can think of it, there's probably a lab for it. And there's probably a very fine instrument <laughs> that you uh, would take years to master. 
Yeah. Sure, I'll also, um, I didn't use the body scanner, so I wish that were that I had the chance to do that. So I encourage you all, um, the new residents to do that. Um, I remember using, um, I didn't operate the machine, but there was a shop for laser cutting. Um, and I think when making a mold for the silicone in my project, I used the laser cutter. Um, yeah, I placed a link of the D2FS and you could see some footage uh, of the space. And also there's a list of the, the facilities um, they have. So those are like a laser cutter and at different scale and also 3D printer at different scale. Um, And any other questions or anything you're curious about or you would like to hear from us anything we could share? Yeah, we can probably take one or two more questions um, if anyone has one. Well, maybe then I have a question for our artist, um, Morgan and Joe. Would you mind sharing like um, maybe the like the most valuable thing you learned um, from the artist residency? Thanks. Tough one, I know. Sorry. <laughs> That's a really tough one. I, I don't even. I don't even necessarily have an answer. I think the most valuable thing that it allowed me to do was to kind of like demystify um, electronics for me. Uh, that's something that my entire life has been a little bit like, whoa, like I don't really, I don't really get it. And Jing Wen and Cindy and Ping Soon and everyone else were able to, to be like, no, this is, this is, this is wattage, this, this is voltage, like this. And um, that's something that since uh, exiting the residency, um, I, I've really tried to like learn a lot about and uh, will continue to do so. Um, yeah, I, but there's so many, so many things. It was truly invaluable information. For me, um, like Joe, I also had, like I also learned a lot. I um, had a lot of challenges along the way that I had to sort of problem solve and figure out. Um, but I think for me personally, um, it was sort of um, reorienting myself, um, figuring out like why um, I make the work that I do um, and through like presenting it, through presenting it, doing artist talks, um, sort of being able to sort of look at all the stuff that I've done and make a through line, I think was really important. Um, and also like encouraging for me personally to continue making work. I, I also just wanna just add, just agree with that, that I had never talked about my work for an hour before. And that was a, a really important thing. It, it was like writing an essay, how you you learn a lot just by writing the essay. You know, it was um, uh, really worthwhile to talk about your work in a public setting. Thank you, uh, Olivia has a question. Thank you, Jingwen. Yeah, my question was, so uh, this question is is more for Cindy and, and you, Jingwen. You, you know that we went to ITP together, so have the background in, you know, creative tech, uh, physical computing, AR, and then, and then my most recent work has in, been in biotextile design, specifically in bioplastics. And what I'm thinking about for this residency is actually expanding my work on bioplastic nail, like fake nail art and incorporating more technologies with that. Um, and then now that Cindy, when you mentioned teeth, I was like, oh my God, teeth jewelry too. I don't know. So it's definitely sparking interest, but with someone with my background who has sort of already come from a more creative technology and like bio material background, do you think this is still a good fit for someone like me? That's 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 sort of my question. Oh, 
totally because um I think Morgan has a very similar background <laughs> yeah so um I think we have we don't really um so so actually um from my perspective um I think everything is technical I don't know if this makes sense so for example why is working with textiles and being able to like the the work of fibers artists right working with the why is that not technical but working with hardware and sensors is I think there's a technical element to everything and especially to on body design right like you know fashion design tattoo art it's super technical right and so um so I would just say that I am personally very tech um yeah I, I have a very open interpret to what is tech um and the stuff that we think is tech today in a hundred years it might become art <laughs> we've seen this time and time again textiles they were like you know the the technology um of before the industrial era but now it's seen as art right so so yeah we have a very um open view to what is tech and not so I think it really depends on how you define yourself and how you uh identify your work yeah and and maybe like I think it might just be interesting um maybe Morgan if you wouldn't mind maybe talking about your background because you have a very so Morgan has a very interesting um mixed background yeah 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 cool thanks Morgan yeah Olivia actually I'm also an ITP alum <laughs> so um yeah I don't think that um obviously that there's a lot to sort of gain if you've never been exposed to creative tech before like um the exposure to that but I also think it's like very valuable as well to for me to like um, sort of be thinking about what I learned at ITP in a different way. Um, yeah, I would say that I don't think that should be a barrier to your application. Right, and Morgan, your undergrad was in journalism, right? Yeah, I've done a lot of <laughs> different so, things. Yeah. Morgan, same, mine was also in journalism. Oh, mine. no way. <laughs> Oh, we should talk. <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah, so we're very open. So don't, um, don't, don't, um, yeah, just don't feel limited by where you're coming from. We're very, very open. Yeah. Cool. So maybe yeah, I have add, one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is there a question? Oh, sorry, Gina. Uh, I uh, you... No, yeah. uh, I would just say like, um, for example, we work with uh, Morgan, who has uh, for example, has experience with Adreno and like coding or physical computing before, and then we and with Joe, who um, was just really open to learn all the new techniques and and uh, new techniques we de develop in the lab. So we are very uh, flexible in terms of like what uh, we offer uh, as a collaborator. So it's a very open collaboration. Uh, and then don't hesitate if you are from a specific background or if you already know a certain tech technology or so. So, um, and Cindy, you had a question or? Uh, I just have a final question for um, Morgan and Joe. Um, so, um, yeah, so I'm kind of curious, like if you could maybe share us, like, you know, from your perspective, uh, what role, uh, it can be either positive or negative. <laughs> you can't you won't offend us that this but that participant in our in this residency um had for your career um this is not necessarily like my art like artistic practice based though I will speak to that I think um there were a lot of opportunities for artist talks um there was like press which I know like if um, for any artist, that's very important. Um, like outside of that, I actually um, sort of the exposure to, I know the 3D printer keeps getting mentioned, but getting to work with that, I actually, um, after the residency, I got a um, internship in 3D printing um, in fashion. 
and um, I worked in 3D printing for that. And um, that's how I got my current job doing um, 3D art. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like I haven't even like accessed like the what what I, I don't know. I it seems like the ultimate like feather in my cap. It's like the coolest thing in my resume because I don't really I don't really have a normal job. Uh, so um, so I'm very thankful for that in terms of like a career. But also it's it just seems like um, I learned a lot about like um, the benefits of like just the academic connection um and um collaboration on that level um and that's something i really want to continue I'm, I'm i'm just so glad that i initially reached out in the first place um yeah and i'll continue to do that awesome um well Thank you all so much for joining. Um, and thank you uh, to Jing Wen who organized um, this entire event. Thank you so much, Yuan, um, for doing all the heavy lifting. Um, I'm just here to like, I just like come and say random stuff. Um, and thank you so much to um, Morgan and Joe, um, our prior artists for sharing your insight. And thank you all for coming. Um, so, uh, you have our email, so feel free to email us if you have further questions. And we will also post this Q&A session um, online um, in case you need to access some of the information at another time. And we really look forward to your applications. Um, so again, the deadline is April 5th. So still plenty of time, but um, as I always tell my undergraduate students, it's always good to begin early. <laughs> so. With that, thank you all so much, and I wish you all a very lovely weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.